and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingo. Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingor, this week on Fixing South Sudan, the revitalized peace accord revisited. What are the challenges and opportunities facing the agreement? And with us for the show, Dr. Lam Akol Ajawin, the chairman of the National Democratic Movement and a senior member of SAWA. It's our pleasure to welcome him here for the first time in Juba. Welcome to the show. How are you? Fine, and you? I'm very well. Good. But I would be better when there is a, a stable South Sudan, and that is the subject of our discussion. Give me your view about the agreement. It was postponed in May or extended for a period of six months. What were the issues, and are they being resolved? Well, thank you very much. Uh, actually, the, I'm happy that uh, I am on this program, and the title is very fitting, Fixing South Sudan. This is all of what all of us are trying to do. Uh, the agreement was in fact postponed. What was postponed was the, was the transitional period. And uh, the reason in, is that the pre-transition that was calculated to be eight months, uh, uh, had activities that were supposed to, to be implemented within that period, and mainly the security arrangements. Unfortunately, they could not uh, be uh, executed on time, and that's why it became necessary to extend the period for six more months. Was it uh, lack of political will or lack of funding, or both? Both. The, yes, the, all these activities need funding. As you know that uh, uh, the partners of the friends of South Sudan overseas uh, could not uh, help in uh, paying for the expenses required in the implementation of the peace agreement. So the burden, all the burden felt on the government of South Sudan. The government of South Sudan was unable to pay on time, and uh, that's why most of the activities could, could not be implemented. Uh, we believe that the non-payment was not because there was no money in the chest, but we, we believe that uh, the government didn't have uh, enough determination to see that the required amount is put on the table. Let's talk about the, time. sorry, let's talk about the piece, uh, uh, the body that is supposed to implement the agreement and uh, they call it, um, well, you, you say it in your language, but tell us about the composition and maybe the politics of it. You mean which body? The, the one that is uh, headed by the uh, Honorable Tut Galwa. Ah, the National uh, Pre-Transition uh, Committee. Yeah. Well, that committee, of course, is, uh, is tasked with the duty of implementing uh, the aspects of the peace agreement that are not within the ambit of the government. You know that uh, the agreement acknowledges, and rightly so, that within the pre-transition, the government of South Sudan continues to discharge its functions as the supreme uh, 
entity for, for South Sudan. It continues to run the affairs of the country. And those affairs also include financial commitments and uh, allocation. So the NPTC is supposed to complement the work of the government on areas that are uh, exclusively uh, within the peace agreement. And therefore, the composition is, uh, is uh, made up of uh, the government, which is almost half the members, actually half the members, uh, and then the other four parties to the agreement, the SPLM IO had two members, uh, SUA has one member, the other political parties have one member, and the FDs have one member. So it, it is, uh, in total it has ten members from the five uh, parties that signed the peace agreement. So it is inclusive? Yeah, it is. The NPTC has its own challenges, set of challenges, and we'll come back to that. But I would like to start with the first eight months of pre-transition. Yeah. And you mentioned one of the key issues, that was the security arrangements. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, the security arrangements, you know that we have been in war, of course. And, and actually, the reason why we, we have such a long pre-transition was that all the parties are convinced that we must get into the transitional period with one national army. The last agreement uh, provided for two armies up to a certain stage within the transitional period. And we know that uh, problems happen. The confrontation that happened in uh, July 2016, where two armies fighting each other, where members of those, I mean leaders of those armies, were members of the same government. So when we started uh, negotiation in Addis, a case was put that we must unify our forces, the various uh, fighting groups, to become one national army before the transitional period. And uh, the, uh, the time that was calculated to realize that objective was eight months. So eight months was uh, composed of a number of activities. Those activities have uh, timelines. For example, uh, the, the, the each, each armed group have locations. Those locations will be visited by the uh, monitoring body called Citizen, and then they will move to certain specified cantonment areas in those cantonment areas, almost the rest of the activities take place. In cantonment areas, the, the, the actual parade of the soldiers will be taken. They will be screened. They will be uh, prepared for uh, joining training centers. And after training centers, they will be deployed and all this. So the basic the starting point of all the security arrangement uh, processes start with the cantonment. And I suppose that you and, are, sorry, finish your And talk. then now, and because the cantonment has not been done up to today, that is why all these things are behind time. Uh, you signed the agreement, so you probably put your blessing to this idea of a security arrangement. Yeah. Is it practical? It was practical. And it, it is, is practical, provided the required amount of money is provided. There have been other controversial issues, uh, but when we talked about uh, the last uh, over two months when the uh, agreement was extended, it's been over two months. What is your view of the, the pace or the progress of the implementation? Because the eight months did not do it, and is the next six months going to do it? Over two months have already passed. Well, let me tell you one thing, is that first of all, now this is the 10th month since the signing of the peace agreement. And the reason why the eight months came and went was that the required amount of money was not put on the table uh, for the implementing mechanisms to do their job. When we met in Addis after the lapse of the, of the first pre-transitional period. The first thing that 
was agreed upon because if the money is not there, it is pointless to talk about extension or any other period. So the first thing that was agreed in Addis was the government pledging that they will put $100 million on the table from day one of the implementation, I mean of the extended period. And that day one was the 12th of May. We were talking on the 3rd of May, okay? So we had nine days between our agreement to extend the pre-transition and the beginning of the implementation with the deposition of the money. And then after that, we said, okay, what are the activities that needs to be done, you know, before we go to the transitional period? We listed them. After we listed those activities, we formed a technical committee from military commanders to go and put uh, dates and time against each activity. They went and said, they calculated the time required for each activity up to the last one. And the last one, of course, is the deployment after training. Uh, and they came up with a figure of 166 days which in a simple arithmetic will tell you this is five months and a half. So, so we say that, okay, five months and a half, let us make it six months. And therefore, the new six months were contingent on that the money will be put on the table to start work. Can you the money was not put, and now two months have gone, you see, uh, and not yet, there is no uh, money on the table. So there is still know. no funding. So what does it mean? That the agreement is going to collapse? Or somehow you will find a South Sudanese approach to solving it with our own money? Because you were the liberators and you did fight for 21 years without money. What are you going to do? No, when we made agreement in 2005, there were money. You remember... Uh, no, I'm talking even... about the fact that you managed to liberate a country without money. So... Uh, coming to the reality of the situation, the agreement has no funding. So what is your verdict? What's going to happen? We're not saying that there's no funding. The government have not said that. The money the has not been allocated. The government have not said that they have money to fund these activities. Okay, let me... If, it, if it said that, then that would be another matter. Put but it. they told us that they have the money and they will pay the 100 million money required for the implementation of the activities that could not uh, be done in the eight months that elapsed. Given that so the, your question is hypothetical. Given that the money is not on the table, uh -huh. are we likely to have to meet the deadline? What we are saying that let the government provide the money, and then maybe in the in the in the in the four month remaining, we can you know accelerate the the pace of the implementation and double up. There is hope. Yeah. There's. There's hope. It is hope that keeps That's us driving, but the hope is not a plan. Okay, <laughs> let's take a break from here. Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Madingor, and with us is Dr. Lama Akol Ajawin, the chairman of the National Democratic Movement and a senior member of SAWA. We are speaking about how the peace agreement can fix South Sudan. Can the revitalized peace agreement fix South Sudan? Absolutely, because you know, uh, without peace, nothing can move. You know, you need peace to deliver services. 
need peace to uh, bring about development. You need peace for people to go ab around doing their normal business. So the starting point is peace. Yes. Can we say that the same players, yourself included, are going to bring peace? Given the antagonism that we have been witnessing uh, for a long time, or do we need a generational change <laughs> to have stable South Sudan? Okay. Well, in the first place, let us say that uh, despite all the shortcomings that we are talking about, about this peace agreement, the fact is that since it was signed in September last year, the country has seen relative stability. The guns have been silent, except in a very small pocket. Of course, uh, that pocket is also part of South Sudan. We need it to be in peace as well. But I'm saying, uh, re relatively, in most areas of South Sudan, there has been peace. And uh, that is something positive. Let me see the thought you are putting across, that the other armed rebels who are not party to the agreement should be brought back to the fold so that there's total silence of guys. Yeah, it's absolutely, yeah. We How need, can that be done? We need, we need a, let us come to that after I answer the first question, because you haven't yet finished. So the, the, the peace agreement has brought relative stability in the country. Uh, but that is not all of it. To have peace, we must have a sustainable peace. And the, 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 the basis of having a sustainable peace, the foundation, is implementing the provisions of the peace agreement that have, uh, that have been agreed by all to, to be done. And uh, this is why we are struggling to see that these, these uh, measures are put in place. Uh, whether we are capable of uh, proceeding with the peace agreement or whether we need a generational change, uh, of course, uh, everything is open. Isn't I don't it? rule out. I don't rule out a generational change. I you, don't rule it you out. Don't rule because, it out. Yeah. But do you recommend it, given the acrimony that has happened, and there have been back and forth, back and forth, people fighting, starting parties, exiting out of them, and they come back, and it seems like it's a massive confusion for the country. Can you say that you cannot work together as the the parties to the agreement? Well, or is there that will to overcome what divided you? As a matter of fact, I have, we, have mentioned, we have talked about it during the peace talks. And uh, you know, as they say, you know, the sh a shorter wall cannot be seen. So we talk in, the, in Addis, and we said that in order to start on a clean slate, we needed all of us, the politicians, to be excluded during the transitional period of the three years so that we open the door for new people who don't have the kind of feelings you are talking about, the new feeling, people, we call them technocrats, to run the, pre -transi the transitional period and prepare for elections. If we want to come back in the elections, then now we go and fight elections and be elected. This, is what we, this was our proposal. Of course, it couldn't go because others uh, didn't want to be out of power for any, any given time, you see. So me personally and the group I represent, we don't have any qualms about the new people taking over. It is not our problem. To fix South Sudan, yeah. there must be an admission of what is wrong with South Sudan. And on the, uh, separately, the president has apologized about the mess that has engulfed the SPLM and then the country. On this show, Deng Alor has apologized, uh, Honorable Chang Sun. Can you take this opportunity to say, as a starting point for fixing South Sudan, I admit the things that I've done wrong to the people of South Sudan, and it's a starting point. Apology is not, alone is not enough. You know, even when you go to the church, you know, in the, in the Catholic Church where you have people confessing their sins. <laughs> it is, is a beginning of a new direction. And I spoke so about the beginning. It is not enough for me to just apologize, you know, that I have done this. And I continue with the same business as usual. It's not you enough. Know, the real I... apology would have been 
the real apology would have been if we said in Addis, when we were talking about fixing South Sudan, about the peace agreement, about a new beginning, the real apology would have been if all of us said, look, we mismanaged the country. Everything that went wrong, it was because of us. Let us now give the chance for other people to try it. What about you the see? basic apology? So, you so, have nothing to, to apologize about. No, no, no. I'm, I mean, I, I, I don't run away from the responsibility. Having been uh, somebody who was in the helm of affairs uh, in this country for a long time, I bear responsibility to some of the things that have happened. Okay? Nobody is perfect. And, and that, for that, I admit that I have uh, done wrong to the country and to others. And for this, you can apologize. No problem. You can apologize. Yes. But as a politician or as a practical step, I don't go on repeating the same thing uh, time and again, and then I apologize and go on repeating the same thing and apologize. How many apologies have you had since... 2005. I, I get so, your point. That, that is not enough. Apology in yes. itself is yes. not enough. Yes. Yes. But it, it is, is a, a beginning point. of a change. So I must accept change if I'm apologizing that I, I didn't run the country well, I didn't give services, I didn't, give, uh, I didn't have development, I'm a cause of the war that took place, I'm part of that war. You're part Therefore, of the if, if these things have to stop, let us open the chance for others to try. You have been part of the mess. Yes. Let me put it that yes, way. I since nineteen ninety one. I have been. You, not ninety one, even since since nineteen eighty three. You are yeah. <laughs> You Since 1983, started, when I joined the you have SPLM. You have studied countless parties. Some people call you the Raila Odinga of South Sudan. Is that a fair dis designation? Counted, countless parties is not, a, is not a problem. You see, the problem with our people, they think that if you are in one place, eh, if you are in one place, then you are better than others. A party is a platform. We are now talking in front of this table. We can go on and talk of another studio. We can even go and talk on the streets. We have changed positions, isn't it? But we are saying the same thing. The what is important is your objective. If your objective in under one banner, a green banner today, red banner tomorrow, the white banner tomorrow, and you are saying the same thing, that is not a problem. Look at history. How, how many parties have changed their names? Look at the Communist Party. What was it called at the beginning? It was anti-colonial front. Dr. Okay, Lam it became the Democratic Front. It became the Communist Party of Sudan. But it is still the same content. Your objective look at, remains look, the same. Look at the National Islamic Front. Your objective remains, remains the, same. the same. What is it? But it, my objective, what is your main objective? My objective is to fix South Sudan, as you said it. By For us, by we wanted a South Sudan which is democratic, a South Sudan that, uh, that is run on the basis of a parliamentary system, a South Sudan, before we became uh, independent, a South Sudan that has given the right to determine its destiny. This has been the things I've been fighting for and your, all along. And your contribution has been from without, not from within. And have you made what a What do you mean from without? You have not been part of the mainstream. What is the mainstream? Movement that... And uh, that by itself, that by itself is, is uh, anti-democratic. You have been you a are, strong member... It is, of the SPLM, it even is, a, a member... It is anti-democratic. Even the member of the High Command. I was a member of the High Command that had never met since it was formed. It has never met, and uh, this is a fact. I have tried very hard, together with others, to see that the High Command meets, you know, in order to do his job. The job of the High Command was to formulate the policies for running our liberation war. Because, of, because we didn't pay attention to the political component of our national struggle, this is why we are in a mess today. This, is, this by the way, did not happen by chance. Any, any, any movement, a national movement, that takes up arms, it starts with a political agenda. What and, the, and the army is supposed to implement that political agenda. Let me say... So when we, when we, when we came to the, to, to the peace agreement, we, we thought that overnight will turn into a political party that will uh, advocate the kind of things we were talking about. You see? So, 
unfortunately, the leader of the movement, who, who might have had the plans on his head, unfortunately, we lost him in three weeks, you know, and then we lost the direction. I don't want to yeah. dwell so much on the plans. That's the point. The point is, the point is... You open a new chapter. Yeah, open a new chapter with a clear political program. What would the reason say? why the South Sudan today cannot be fixed, it is because those who are holding power don't have a program. Including yourself. I'm not or in are power. You the only one? I'm not in power. I'm, you not, have been I'm in not the power. only one. You the were other minister people. of agriculture. You were minister even before the CPA. You for, did not for how many days? Whatever it was. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't change things because policies are things that are designed to be for a specific time which is reasonably long so that it can be implemented. A party, for example, since 2005, the SPLM has been ruling South Sudan. 2005. We didn't have a problem of the manpower. We didn't have a problem of the human resources. I mean, the, 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 also the, uh, the natural resources. We had oil price running at more than 100 dollars per barrel. We had all this, but what did we do? What, what, what is tangible now that we can be proud of to say that in this period we were able to do X, Y, and Z? You is see? there anything hey. to be proud about the Republic of South Sudan? Even the basic fact that we are now a member of the League of Nations, is that uh, something to recognize as an achievement? Or you say, let's go, it, go beyond? It is achievement of the people. But what for? Why did we struggle to have an independent South Sudan? We have a country. To come and fight among ourselves? And we fix to, it. To, to fight among ourselves in two years? Is it not To being come fixed? and repeat it, fighting again? Now, we are now going to the sixth year fighting? Is that what we want, the independence we wanted? Is it yours? The independence that we fought for and that we achieved through the sacrifices of our martyrs and the wounded heroes and the independence that we celebrated with euphoria in 2011 was a stepping stone towards us correcting the kind of mistreatment that we got from the Sudan. A lot needs and to be that, done. And that, and that means we have to do things better than what they were. That is, that is the objective of independence. Have you fixed now in, in Now, in, 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 in the you? years that we had, what did we do? In the way of fixing, we, are not, we, we have not yet reached fixing. But in the way of fixing, what have we done? We should be honest with ourselves and say, a lot we have not wrong. done that because, because we did not have a plan. But we, did right not, now, we did not have a plan of what we want to do. The peace agreement presents <laughs> a road to transformation. It's possible. It does, but you know, there is, hope. is it not an irony by itself that we are talking about a peace agreement among ourselves? We are talking of a peace agreement among us, the Southerners, who have become independent. It's a question the Southerners who have you been fighting and the leaders for... who have been doing that have to ask themselves. <laughs> yeah, my, but this, there is hope. This is why I'm telling you that we have, uh, we have to apologize, but apology should not be the end. We should go beyond. The apology should be the first step in designing what is the best way forward. Why don't and we... one of the best way forward is not for us to be recycled over and over again. It's to exit. <laughs> and you are ready for that. Exactly. You have accepted that. Yeah. That you have not fixed us. And we have not fixed and we are ready to, to give chance to others to try it. Dr. Lam, we have to leave it here. <laughs> Thanks for coming on Fixing Sauce. Thanks a lot.